I wonder if you've been sewing a top that has a facing finish on the inside, you interface your facing and you go on to sew them together and the facing turns out a little bit little, it just does not match and then you think what have I done? It's all got to do with the way you're interfacing your pieces and that's what today is all about. It's an in-depth dive into interfacing and block fusing, so stay tuned. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing and I have a sewing technique video for you today It is a type of masterclass, it is a little bit of a longer episode so I want to throw that disclaimer right here, right now <laughs> If you are looking for something very short then this is not for you I have a little bit of a background on that I have been involved in adult education for a long time, for decades actually and I have had formal training on adult education it is a lot different to how we embrace new things when we're adults and when we're in school when we're children one of the most important things when I'm showing something is that you understand why that is very important for me in the way I prepare my content and share it with you in my case if I'm learning something new it could be about anything could be about plumbing whatever it is and someone tells me do it like this that's not going to be enough for me I want to know why and that is why my videos can be a bit longer so if you want to complain about that in the comments that the videos are long I'm not going to engage <laughs> and I'm happy that a lot of you do enjoy the in-depth content I think it's really valuable if you're studying something new and you want to get the best results you can a lot has to do with interfacing let me tell you another disclaimer I'm going to share right here right now is that I'm not sharing types of interfacing I use brands nothing like that I'm in Brazil I buy non-branded random types of interfacing just know that when you see me using non-stretch interfacing it's tailors interfacing is very lightweight and it's fusible it does not stretch and then when I use it on knits I'm using a stretchy type of interfacing that I know for you is really easy to find there's tricone interfacing I believe I'm using the exact same thing over here although mine is unbranded and I don't have a name for it so don't expect brand names and details about the type of interfacing I use here just focus on the way I'm using the interfacing <laughs> I have sprinkled this along years of this YouTube channel the way that I like to interface my pieces is by a way that is called block fusing which means you interface a larger piece of fabric than you need first and then you place your shape on top and cut it out and then it's going to turn out exactly in the exact original shape it should sometimes i've had comments saying you just waste so much interfacing and you waste so much extra fabric and i don't really think it's the case so i'm going to show you some examples because i know for a lot of you seeing is believing and i've always said if you don't block fuse and you just interface traditionally by interfacing traditionally i mean you take your pattern piece that says there cut one of main fabric cut one of interfacing so you cut them separately then you head over to the iron and you fuse them together and you hope for the best and i've always said that that makes your fabric piece change shape it can be slight in some fabrics it can be a lot in other fabrics and that's why i say i like to block fuse i decided to use a bit of fabric and interfacing to do it both ways so that you can really really see what happens and I've got two examples to show you one in a more structured fabric with a hem facing another one with a lighter fabric and with more shapes on a V type of neckline facing so you can see what the results could be with the traditional way of interfacing pieces and the non-traditional which would be the block fusing which is the method I stand by a thousand percent take your notepad save this video for later you'll see lots of examples it'll be very clear to you once you're done with this episode on how you can get your pieces to look really really nice it's really important to conserve pattern shapes and the size you don't want things pulling and tugging because they've ended up smaller and shorter the first example we're going to see is going to be a hem facing I did cut one facing in the traditional way so you can see how that turned out before cutting it the block fusing way so let's see I have some linen blend fabric here it's linen blended with rayon I have a facing to cut out this is a hem facing actually so it's quite curved this is the pattern piece that you're meant to cut on the fold so I am going to follow this in my usual practice I would usually stick another paper here and just replicate this so that I have one full extended piece so that I don't have to put it on the fold I think it gives you a more accurate size because on the fold there you can have more or less just depends on how accurately you fold it so this is the first thing I would never do but I'm going to do it like this <laughs> so that you can see typical interfacing means that you cut your piece out first and then you cut out out the same piece out of interfacing and then you try to fuse it together so let's just put this right here on the fold as you would 
I'm gonna be using a rotary cutter to cut both methods out so that they're comparable. <laughs> nice sharp blade here. Okay, there we have it. I'm gonna take this away and put it on the ironing board. Here I have my fusible interfacing. This is very lightweight. It's quite floaty and quite slippery I find. So I usually don't like working with it on its own, which is exactly what I'm doing now. I'm putting my pattern piece on top and I'm gonna cut this one on the fold as well. But with this traditional method, you would basically be cutting out these pieces twice. So with this method, there's quite a few opportunities for human error to occur. One of them is not putting this on the fold accurately, your fabric or your interfacing shifting around. And then the third part is when you fuse this on, how it's gonna change shape and size. Here we have our interfacing piece. Let's head over to the iron and fuse them together. Okay, here we have our facing piece. This is wrong sides up. And then we're gonna put the glue side of the interfacing on top and try to match the shape right here. So we're just applying the heat here to get this to fuse on. Whenever you're applying the heat, you're just doing up and down motions. And I usually go through the piece twice and give it a second pass just to make sure everything's really fused on. Okay, so here would be our facing. Now I have extended my facing piece like is my preference. So I've just got more paper here and it's got the same shape. And this is the shape that the facing should have. So I'm just gonna take this and put it on top and see if it's the same. So what I can see is that on each side, the facing is an eighth of an inch smaller. Let me show you. You can see the facing piece at the bottom, the paper, and this turned out smaller by an eighth of an inch right there. It's the same on the other side. The other thing that's different is that we have a different shape than we had originally with the facing. So the facing is a little straighter there, but because we had the fabric loose over here, it just stretched into a different shape. So that's not necessarily gonna match what we wanna sew it to. And then on the other side, it's also smaller. So the glue, when you fuse it onto the fabric, most of it will react and it will just make the piece shrink. And this is why this is not very accurate and I just don't like cutting my facings like this ever. Wherever there's a facing, I won't do this method. I'll do the next method that I'll show you now. Now it's the same fabric, the same pattern piece, all the same. I have two facings here for my hem, for this top that I'm making. I extended my pieces so that I don't have to cut them on the fold. That's helpful. And I just calculated the piece of fabric that I was gonna need to get these two pieces cut out and just interface that little area first. Slightly bigger, so much easier to do this. Easier to manipulate the interfacing as well when you're just cutting out a, ra a random rectangle <laughs> and you get that piece fused on first and then you place your facing pieces on top and use your rotary blade to cut them. And then the result is gonna be so much more accurate. So this is a piece that I cut traditionally, cutting them separately, fusing them separately. It's shorter on the sides, it's got a different shape right here. And let's get the piece that I cut out with the second method, block fusing. And let's just lay it on top. And you're gonna find it's exactly the same shape. Everything here matches on the sides. It's really, really accurate to the original pattern piece. Nothing shifted, changed shape or size. And this is why I prefer this method. I just wanted to show you what the difference was. This is a sort of straight facing. But I am going to show you another example with a smaller neckline facing where the difference can be even more apparent. And it's actually this top I'm wearing right now. I made it just recently. This is a Rise and Shine top from Pattern Emporium. This doesn't have a facing, this has binding. Where the facing is, is over here at the hem. It's quite a wide facing. It's a flared style right here. The facing is structured and lets you have that structured look, which is the intended design. If I lift this up, we have a facing in there. I already have a full video about this one. If you haven't checked it out, go and have a look. It's really, really cute. There is another version I made with an elastic at the hem instead. This pattern is still on sale. I'm plugging it in here. <laughs> I'll leave all the details down below. So you can see that with this one, because the fabric is a little more structured and the shape is a little straighter, it is still curved, but it's not super, super curved. The change of the shape wasn't too dramatic. I wanted to show you that it still changed in the center. It dipped a little lower. It was still a little bit shorter on the sides. And then when you end up trying to stretch out a facing to make it fit your garment, whether it's a neckline or a hem or wherever, you're gonna end up with puckers and it's just not cool. It's just not a nice experience. What happens is that it makes you think, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? Did I cut my pattern pieces wrong? Did I use the seam allowance wrong? You know, it makes you doubt your sewing skills and yourself when it's actually just the technique that's letting you down. <laughs> that interfacing is letting you down because that glue, that heat, you know, the fabric is gonna to react to that. So 
that's why I'm a big proponent in doing the block fusing and you can see how when you do that you get the exact same size where all the pieces are going to match together really well now let's see one where the fabric is lighter weight it's fabric that has more of a tendency to deform and stretch out this is a rayon linen blend rayon 87% 13% linen lighter weight it's a project that's on the go. You'll probably see this one after Easter, so I can't share much, but you'll see the facings. <laughs> and this is a V shape and a rounded shape on the back. You'll see that the difference here is quite noticeable. The last example was a more structured fabric and a straighter shape. This time I'm gonna cut a facing that's quite curved and it's got a V point right there where this fabric is a little lighter. It's not too floppy either. It does have some linen and rayon in here. I've just folded it. I've put my pattern piece on the fold and I'm going to cut this out traditionally just a single layer of fabric that I'm then going to interface. The rotary cutter always gives you the best precise cuts for shapes like this so I really like it. So if I were doing it like this I would still keep the most precautions alive meaning I wouldn't be moving this around from place to place. I would touch it really delicately and just take it to my ironing board and then get to it right away not leave it for later. Every minute that passes that we move this around can stretch it out. Here I have my interfacing also on the fold and I'm going to cut the same shape right here. I'm wasting interfacing and fabric to give you these examples because I really wanted you to see how it can turn out when you use this traditional method. Here we have our facing and our interfacing and I'm just going to try and match these up as best as I can. I've brought this over here so you can clearly see the difference between the pattern piece that's underneath and the facing that's on top and how different it is. So this facing should have this exact same shape with the interfacing and you can see how it got narrower in some areas. Here in this area it got shorter where the V is. It sort of stretched out longer on that side. It's just completely deformed. So I wouldn't be really confident that this would give you a really precise result following your seam allowances exactly. You know, this could just end up fitting totally different on the neckline. If you had a typical facing like this, for example, that would go on the back, the same thing would happen. You'd end up with wonky pieces that are narrower, stretched out, or shorter on these ends. So this is why I don't use this method ever, ever, ever for both wovens and knits. And I just wanted to show you what happens there. Now I'm going to interface my facings the way that I like to do it and then show you how it's going to turn out on top of this pattern piece and how exactly it turns out. I'm going to do this all over again. <laughs> I'm going to cut one of these and one of these but with the interfacing already fused onto the fabric before cutting it out. Here I'm cutting my facing pieces with the fabric already interfaced. You can see the black edges around the white pattern piece. That means the black interfacing is already fused on. Just a little larger than the piece and I know I'm going to get a really accurate result. Now I'm going to show you this back facing. Now what I've done here is I've interfaced both layers that I need because my fabric is lighter. So both of the layers here are interfaced. Sometimes you just need to interface one layer. In that case I would interface the piece of fabric I need. Underneath I would put the non-interfaced fabric and then I would cut them both, both out at the same time like this. Both layers together, one interfaced, one not. In this case, both of them are interfaced. And you can see how accurate this is. There's nothing getting warped or twisted. This is the V facing and it's also very accurate. Let me put it like that so I can show you the comparison of this one I did the traditional way and how different it turned out. Very, very different. That's why I highly recommend you do the block fusing. It'll always give you a really neat and accurate result with the pattern piece turning exactly like it should. This top turned out beautiful. It turned out amazing. Can't really share much because it's a pattern that's still in testing from Sinclair Patterns. Now before I go deeper into this, now that we have the main concepts of what block fusing is, I wanted to let you know about some spring sales that are happening right now. Sinclair Patterns is running an Easter sale through the 2nd of April. 20% off the whole site. A discount appears at checkouts. So you won't see the discount there while you're browsing, but when you go and pay, then the 20% off is going to appear. I'll leave you my affiliate link. I've really enjoyed my projects using Sinclair Patterns and I'll leave you the playlist of the ones I've made. 
they all have tutorials as usual another brand that's having a spring sale is Itch to Stitch this one runs through the 31st of March so just a few more days and it's also 20% off site-wide also the discount appears at checkout in the next examples I'm going to show you of more in-depth interfacing you will see some examples of Itch to Stitch makes also find my affiliate link and my playlist full of tutorials down below if you would like to support my work here please use my affiliate link if you want to shop something in these sales it really does help me make an income with all this work that I do here on YouTube so I'm very grateful if you use my affiliate link and you don't pay anything extra now that we know the main concepts about this and how this works I'm going to show you some examples and don't just think I'm doing this type of interfacing with woven projects which is mainly when you would see pieces that need interfacing it's rare to see neat types of garments that do need interfacing but they are around and so don't be surprised if you see facings on neat garments because they do exist for example a few years ago i made the juno jacket from sinclair patterns it's quite an involved make with a zipper lots of pieces pockets facings sh zipper shields so many things and i'm pointing with an arrow here on the screen of all the pattern pieces so you can see them the ones that look black are the interfaced ones you can see that there's hem facings in this jacket as well it's because there's a curved hem those pieces were interfaced using the exact same method that you saw before with trico knee interfacing which is the type of interfacing that stretches it looks like this this is the type of interfacing that is stretchy as you can see it's very lightweight this will allow the fabric to give and to move and to stretch as you live your life you don't want to use non-stretch interfacing on knit garments that usually does not turn out well <laughs> and i think the only way to finish a hem nicely when it's curved is with a hem facing if you just try to fold that up it's going to end up super pocket and wonky so i do appreciate a hem facing that is of course done with the same block fusing technique and love that jacket it's really really cool another example from sinclair patterns who tend to use a lot of facings on knit garments and i appreciate that <laughs> is the claudia dress this is a beautiful fit and flare dress with really interesting type of princess seams and that v neckline there is finished with a facing but i did film that facing in the tutorial for that dress and that one also has interfacing so let's just see a little bit about that one we usually see in patterns that facings come like this and then on this area you would put it on the fold the same for the back i just find it more accurate to create a whole piece and to cut it in a single layer without putting it on the fold sometimes when you put it on the fold the excess fabric there just makes this area wider without you wanting it to be. I just like to extend it and I'm block fusing as well. I have fused a piece of knit interfacing onto this so I can cut it out for the front and the back. This dress has a fitted bodice. You don't want to use interfacing that doesn't stretch in that facing for a knit dress that's fitted. It will compromise the fit of your chest, the upper chest area it would start pulling. That's why having that interfacing that stretches is going to work and is what is recommended there so pay attention to that there are some garments that are sleeveless like this one and an alternative way to finish it on the inside is with an all-in-one facing this facing has a really interesting shape that involves the neckline and the armhole all in one piece and the opportunities for human error there and getting a whole different shape is so big because the piece has such a funny shape there's so many curves there's so much bias on those cuts and so this is definitely one where you want to block fuse the important thing is that i like to interface first so i have a larger piece of fabric here that is already interfaced and i have the two facing pieces now on the pattern you just have half of the facing piece and that's usually how you find them in all the patterns i just put more paper here and replicate it so that i can have an extended piece and it's much easier to cut and work with all i'm going to do now is just cut these out with my rotary cutter you can see on screen here my santorini top from each to stitch this one has that technique. It's beautiful inside, very, very neat. It finishes everything in one go. It's a really fun technique. Even though you can sew and interface the way you want to, I'm strongly, strongly recommending you block fuse with any facing that is very finely shaped because the chance for error here is so big. It has to be done. I'm just saying it hands down. I would not do it any other way. Now there is a tank I made from each to stitch called Sentosa tank, which also has this type of all-in-one facing on the inside. The difference here that this is for a neat fabric and my main fabric here is an ITY. You can see on screen here the pattern pieces they lay it out on the table and the shape of these facings same type of funny shape i did the exact same thing my stretchy knee interfacing my ity i fused it first then cut my pieces and then i end up with something that fits and is not smaller it's so disheartening to have a smaller facing inside it's just the worst so that's an example where i've done it 
on a neat fabric in the exact same way. So don't think this is just for wovens. Sometimes you have garments that have collars, cuffs, plackets, all sorts of shapes, pocket flaps, <laughs> lots of little pieces that you need to interface. Uh, you can see here on the screen my table full of pieces that were block fused. You can see the outline of the black area coming from beneath the paper. And this is common practice for me. And just cut your pieces bigger. You're not gonna waste a ton of fabric. Don't be stingy about your interfacing and your fabric for this reason, please. <laughs> In a lot of these garments, sometimes you just need to interface one layer. For example, on a cuff, the inner cuff, that will touch your skin is probably not going to be interfaced and only the outer edge is going to be interfaced sometimes it's the same on collars you just need one layer interface the other one not what i would do there is just interface one layer of fabric but i would put my non-interfaced fabric underneath as well and cut both at the same time you reduce your chance of human error so much if you just cut them together instead of cutting them separately and it's less work as well the rotary cutter does wonders and it can make this experience much more enjoyable another area where you would see a facing which is not that common but it's one of my faves is with a waist facing the example you're seeing here on screen the pattern pieces you see here are from the upland trousers from each to stitch where you have a facing i'm pointing arrows to them there on the screen so you can see them those were also done with block fusing you never want to have a facing turn out smaller than your waist also when you're sewing these together you need to stay stitch your waist as well so that everything ends up matching up you don't have anything pulling or creating you grief while you're sewing making you think you made mistakes <laughs> just do the block fusing and you'll be good now there's modified block fusing this is different because up to now we've seen that we're interfacing whole pattern pieces like whole facings entire pocket flaps, entire collars, that sort of thing. But what happens when you just need to interface part of that pattern piece? So there's also a way to do block fusing here. What I don't wanna do is cut my piece, cut my interfacing and then fuse it partially on that area because it can also warp the shape there. So I'm gonna show you some examples here. The most common one is when you're sewing something with a zipper. Woven or neat, I would do the exact same thing. I want to interface that first and then cut it out here on the top and the bottom so it doesn't end up shorter in the center front and end up pulling. Let's see how I would interface this center front area. The example you're seeing now is a joy jacket from Chalk and Notch. You'll find this tiny, tiny little pattern piece for interfacing. It's only about half an inch wide or three eighths. And that is how wide the interfacing has to be here on the center front. But I just find it's way too narrow. It's not gonna catch the seam allowance of the zipper very well. I prefer to have something a little wider. So I've cut strips of one inch. I think that is nicer. I've got a bit of fabric that's a little larger than my pattern piece as you can see there on the top. Same as here on the bottom. And I've cut the selvage away really, really carefully. So I just have raw edges of fabric. I have two layers here. I'm just gonna fold this away. I'm much more comfortable interfacing this first. Once that's in, if there's any shrinkage gonna happen this way, it's gonna happen. And then my pattern piece is gonna turn out the original length. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fuse this all along the center front here. I don't need to cut the center front again. It's already cut really, really neatly along the grain line. So then all I have to do is match up the edge of the paper to this and then cut it out. So that's one side interfaced. This is where the edge of the paper is gonna go. And then I'm gonna cut it out. But first I need to interface the other side because I have both layers here on the ironing board. Here is my front piece. I had just been to the iron as you saw and interfaced the center front here for both layers. I have the paper aligned right along the edge there and now I can go ahead and cut my piece like normal. The joy jacket from Chalk and Notch also has a hood piece here which continues is sewn onto the neckline and the zipper is also going to be there so you also need to interface that center area of the hood so let's see that. What I have here are the side panels for the hood. I'm going to take some of these that I already cut and just interface this area right here. So that's one side and then I'm just gonna flip and do the same thing on the other side. Now I can finish cutting this part right there and at the bottom I have a little excess also. This whole process makes sure that this is gonna be the original length intended and that this area is not gonna shrink this way when interfaced. And now I can go ahead and cut my piece like normal and neaten everything up. You might find that in some pattern pieces where there's an extension or maybe a collar that is also involved with the zipper. So if you have that, make sure you interface that center area in the exact same way as you did the center front so that everything matches 
and then your pieces are not shorter than your zipper. Last year I was involved with a really 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 lengthy project which was the Isla trench coat from Name Patterns. Red one, beautiful, my most beautiful garment I've ever made in my whole life. But let me tell you that the interfacing took days to do. <laughs> Every little piece in this trench was interfaced either completely the collars and things but the main pieces also you needed to interface armholes necklines bottoms of capes bottoms of uh, it's just everything so let me show you a little bit about how for a lot of the pieces we need to interface the edges of the pattern pieces like the top parts of the sleeves for both the upper sleeve and the under sleeve I'll put a little diagram here so you can see all the pieces that need to be interfaced in this way. And we don't have pattern pieces for that. It just says to create your own that are one and a half inches wide, four centimeters. So from this sleeve, I'm gonna show you the example. <laughs> I just drew my line right there. And then I just copied it onto another paper, tracing wheel, you know the deal. <laughs> you put paper underneath and then you just mark and then you get dots on the other side. So I'm going to do a type of modified block fusing. I don't want to cut this exact piece and fuse it on after cutting my sleeve pieces or all the pieces. I'm afraid these areas will distort and shrink a little. So I want to keep everything in the original shape and size. So this is my piece here. You can see that's the red line that would match this red line over here. But I just cut my pieces around three quarters of an inch bigger all the way around there. But on this part, it matches my line right there so from this line here we have the one and a half inches that's going to be exact and I've done this for all the pieces so I've created all my pieces <laughs> I've also made little arrows to mark the grain line so that it matches the interfacing and I don't just cut them in with whichever way this is matching the grain line of the sleeve right there of course the thing about this edge on the interfacing you need to cut it with pinking sheets so that we get that zigzag effect and then the outline of the interfacing on the fabric isn't too visible from the outside so that's important to cut this edge with the pinking shears. All the rest I'm gonna cut with the normal scissors right there. For this I'm using Taylor's interfacing. It's woven interfacing. It's very loosely woven, but the feasible side is on this side, appropriate for this type of project. Here you can see all the little pieces I'm gonna need. This project is gonna take a lot longer than usual in the cutting phase because there's so many little pieces to interface. See here involve the armhole of the front the shoulder and the neckline that's why it has that shape and it's similar with the back piece back neckline shoulder and armhole it's just all one piece so I'm just going to take my time to cut out all these pieces and put them aside <laughs> then I have to cut out the main pieces and start interfacing everything Here you can see the top part of my main front piece with a tracing paper I mark the outline of where I want to meet my interfacing piece right there so that's how it would end up being you can see I cut this edge with the zigzag scissors with the pinking shears. This is bigger. I also cut this bigger look about three quarters of an inch above that everywhere. Once I've got this fused on both sides, I'm going to finish trimming and cutting away where this is actually going to be. On this other side, I also have the mark and I'll repeat the same process for all the pieces that need this done. Here are more pieces. You saw me interfacing some of these. There's actually no pattern piece in this whole trench coat that is not interfaced, at least these main pieces. Now, some jackets want you to interface the hem areas. It just stabilizes the bottom when you fold up your hem allowance. It just looks nicer, especially if you're going to have lining sewn onto there. I think you should be interfacing the bottom area. So one example I'm going to show you about the hems is with the Winterthur jacket from Itch to Stitch. Beautiful, I've made two of these in linen, just gorgeous. You're never gonna see this interfacing because it will be hidden by the lining on the inside anyway. Here you had recommended to interface a good chunk, about four inches from the bottom of each of your pieces. So let's see. This is the type of interfacing that is stretchy, as you can see, it's very lightweight. I do use this for woven sometimes, but this is the type that you want to use to fuse along the bottoms of these pieces. There's no pattern pieces for this interfacing, you need to cut it yourself. You just need to cover four and a half inches of the bottom of all these pieces. And I like to partially block fuse. That's why I have cut my pieces like normal up to sort of there. And there and I left myself some extra on the side, some extra on the bottom. Same as for all these pieces because I want to fuse my interfacing pieces 
let that linen shrink if it's going to shrink a little with the interfacing and then I'm going to trim away that excess right here and that's how I'm going to get super accurate pieces. I know this is non-conventional, this is something extra I do but I think it's worth the time. Let me show you up closer with this smaller piece. So you can see up to there I've cut along the edge but then I've got extra fabric right here. From this edge up to here I've measured my line four and a half inches, 11.5 centimeters. This is what I want to interface. So what I'm gonna do basically is put tracing paper behind and just make a mark so that I know I've got a faint yellow line there. I know to place my interfacing there and I'll do the same mark here on this other side. I'm gonna take my time to do this. This usually takes longer. I know exactly now to get my interfacing, cut these pieces to match this shape, starting from that line. I'll interface that, then I'll get my piece back, and then after the interfacing is there, I'll trim away on the edges. I do stand by this. I think if you just cut your pieces and then interface them, you run the risk of this area becoming a little smaller and this area becoming a little narrower. Most fabrics will react to the heat and the glue of the fusible interfacing, so I'd rather be safe than sorry. So here's one of the pieces. I have already been to the iron and interfaced. You can see there's the black interfacing right along that line I had drawn right there. Both sides, super accurate. And now I'm 100% happy to cut this out properly. I had left a little bit of excess along here. So now this piece is done. And I'll do the same with the bottom of the other two pieces I had shown you. This is basically to stabilize the hem and give it a super smooth look. So this is basically the hem allowance like that. Sometimes you also need to do the same thing with the bottom of your sleeves in jackets. Sometimes you have a one piece sleeve or a two piece sleeve. Let me show you an example with a joy jacket from Chalk and Notch where we had to interface the bottom and I also did modified block fusing there. What I have here are the bottoms of the two sleeve pieces. I've put them right against each other there. One of them is the front, one of them is the back. You also have pattern pieces separately to cut interfacing but I don't use them. You can see these match right there. This means that the bottom of the sleeves where the hem is going to be need to be interfaced and I'd rather just do that first. So I haven't cut through this. It's just one piece for now. And where the hem is going to be, with my tracing wheel, I also marked the line that I want interfaced. So you can see that faint line there. And I cut my interfacing to match. So I'm going to align the edge of my interfacing and just match it up to the line and fuse. I'll do the same on this other side. So you can see the line right there. It's really faint. It, it just needs to be enough so that you can see it. And I'm gonna fuse this other side also. That's done. <laughs> Now I had cut my sleeves partially, I just need to trim it out properly now and cut everything nice and neat. And this is how I have blocked fused the bottoms of these two sleeve pieces. Once I've cut this out, I can cut through the middle and separate these two. But this is just so much easier to do. I mean, if you cut this exact piece out of interfacing and then you fuse it onto your sleeve that's already been cut out, this can shrink this way and that way and then it just does not look right. Sometimes you have some blouses, shirts or jackets have an integrated button placket over here. So instead of sewing a different piece to your center front, it's just extended and wider and you need to interface that center area and then just fold it in. And that's how you get that area of the garment nice and stable. That's what I call an integrated facing or an integrated placket. I also do the same type of modified block fusing and I have an example for you from the canvas jacket from Wardrobe by Me, red linen, beautiful, I did the exact same thing. This is the front pattern piece and there is a dashed line right there. This jacket has an integrated facing which makes the sewing easier because you just fold it onto itself. So that line there is 3 8 and then there's the second line right there. And only this area is the one that you want to interface. So instead of cutting the interfacing and fusing it on later, you know, I try to block fuse however I can, even though it's unconventional. I have cut a very straight line of interfacing under there in two layers and I've placed the edge right there. I drew a mark with chalk right there and right there so I know that's where I need to cut. So I have my interfacing here, I've cut it longer than usual and I'm going to fuse this right to the selvage to the edge of the fabric and then once that's fused onto the fabric then I'm going to place my pattern piece on top of my linen and cut it out. That's going to ensure that my length here at the center front stays the same. This is the front piece 
And remember, I had already fused it on before cutting my pattern piece. There is a separate pattern piece to cut out this interfacing, but I just used the references that were there on the pattern, so I didn't actually use this pattern piece. Now, other areas that I also do this with are the tops of pockets. Some pockets are slanted, and I think it's super important to stabilize before cutting the piece out. And I have an example for you from the Joy Jacket from Chalk and Notch. Yeah, there was a lot of interfacing with the Joy Jacket. <laughs> the Joy Jacket also has rectangle patch pocket options, but I chose the slanted ones, and let's see that. Slanted pocket, the angled one. There is a separate pattern piece, but as I mentioned, I don't use these. I just prefer the block fuse, so I don't use this. What I've done is put a tracing paper underneath, and with a wheel, I just marked where I have to interface. So if I fold this away, you'll see a faint little yellow mark right there. I can see it really clearly. <laughs> and then I cut interfacing in exactly that same shape. So I'm going to place this edge here, and you can see that all this area is the one and I'm going to interface now. I've got the same on the other side, I've got that faint line and I'm gonna match my interfacing over here. This is modified block fusing but this process is really important for me. I think it's got a great deal to do with the success and having everything match and not having areas turn out smaller. You can see that line there matches the black interfacing on the back and now I can finish cutting my pocket piece out because I'd only cut it out partially. Sometimes you just have rectangle patch pockets and I would also interface the tops there. The example you're going to see is with the winter jacket from each to stitch. Now I'm using regular non-stretch interfacing for some of the pieces and these are the patch pockets. I've got a larger one and a smaller one. They're upside down. And up here on the top you'll see notches there and there so this section here has to be interfaced so I've aligned them there so that they're at the same level and with a tracing wheel I made a line right here underneath and I have a yellow line really faint there I can see it you can see I've cut my pockets a little larger as well and now I've cut the interfacing really straight there that's gonna match my yellow line and I'm just gonna go ahead and fuse this right here then I'm flipping it and I have the same thing on the other side so now that the top part of the pockets have been interfaced now I'm happy to cut them out now when I would not interface the top of pockets probably if the fabric is super heavy like a denim if I'm doing some type of denim something with patch pockets there I probably wouldn't want to interface the top when I would not ever interface the tops of pockets I would stretch jeans and the patch pockets on the back if you interface that it could compromise the stretch of your jeans you know even if you use stretchy knee interfacing it never stretches as much as your stretch denim should especially considering that you're probably having about two inches of negative ease around the hip if this is a pull-up style you're pulling it over your full hip so you really really need all the stretch of all the pieces including the back patch pockets so that's an area i would not interface i would just fold under top stitch and call it a day like you see in ready to wear i have and so on so many jeans in my life and I've never seen any interface pockets on jeans. I hope this was helpful. Maybe you're a little bit sad. Maybe if you want to try this out, you think it's going to take so much longer. I've, I've never said this was fast. <laughs> I've always said this takes a lot longer. I've sometimes mentioned that the way I sew takes a lot longer because I do invest a lot of time into the preparation phase, which is the cutting, the marking, the interfacing before getting to the sewing pretty much happy with my results because i know i've put in the dedication so that the garment i'm sewing turns out as best as it can and i think it's always worth it we're usually not sewing for other people we're usually not on a really strict deadline usually so if it takes you a few extra hours to cut out an interfacing that's fine i'm talking in extreme cases here like the isla trench coat the cutting and the interfacing took two whole days. I was so exhausted, but I'm so happy with my trench coat. <laughs> if you just have a facing to deal with or a collar, you know, just block fuse. I promise you, that's the way I do it. I think you can see the results for yourself when I show you my garments and the way they turn out. Very nice, no packets. I take all the care in the world to make sure that the facings are going to be super, super accurate. And I think it's really important. I hope this longer episode was helpful. I hope it gives you something to think about for the next project you make where you need to use some interfacing. That's all for me. Have an amazing weekend. Don't forget to check out the Easter sales at Sinclair Patterns and It's to Stitch this weekend. And I'll see you next week. Bye.